Good afternoon and welcome to Capital Account. I'm Lauren Lister here in Washington, D.C. And we have certainly seen a crackdown in the last few days on Occupy Wall Street from police. And over the last 60 days, arguably, from critics who have derided them as socialists. The problem is that many Americans simply don't understand what's at stake here. The Occupy Wall Street movement is basically socialistic. It essentially wants the government to control who gets what. If that's the problem, then what about the government handouts to people who don't need them? We'll tell you about the wealth redistribution that has billions of dollars in subsidies going to millionaires. And speaking of government payouts, how about more than a million dollars in a signing bonus for joining one of the mortgage giants controlled by the U.S. Treasury? How about millions paid out to its executives? Well, I'll tell you, it's a much better payoff than the one for most other U.S. taxpayers who spent $170 billion to rescue Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in the most expensive bailout of the financial crisis. And the deficit commission, the so-called suit and down. But to what exactly? Even if this deficit commission gets a deal, it is barely a dent in the $15 trillion debt load already racked up by the U.S. We'll take a look at what this all means. Let's get to today's capital account. Okay, we have been talking a lot about the Eurozone debt crisis lately. So we thought, what about the debt problems brewing right under our nose here in Washington? Should we give you a closer look at those? Because the U.S.'s own public debt to GDP ratio is now 100%. France and Spain, for comparison, have lower debt to GDP ratios. Now, the Super Committee, of course, has been tasked with downsizing the U.S. deficit. They're trying to get it down by $1.5 trillion over a decade. Now, they have a week to come up with this deal now. They're down to the wire. A lot of people are worrying about whether they'll reach a deal or not. We ask, does this really matter? Because is the problem much bigger than that deal? Tad DeHaven, budget analyst at the Cato Institute, is here to answer that question because he studies this very closely. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you ever for having me on. Absolutely. So the super committee, as I said, it has a week to cut up $1.5 trillion. Sounds like a lot, but this is over 10 years, and they can't agree how to do it. So my question to you, is this a joke when you look at the fact that the United States already has $15 trillion in debt right now? Washington really is a joke. I often say that uh, you know it's the one town in the United States where the circus never actually leaves. And uh, really what we're having now with this, with this current discussion is basically a continuation of what we had the, uh, earlier in the year. When the Republicans took over control of Congress, uh, they were basically given a mandate to try and rein in government debt and spending. And that's kind of hard to do if you have the Obama administration control, you have Harry Reid in control uh, of the Senate. Uh, and I'd also add that I'm not really uh, convinced that Republicans are serious about cutting spending anyhow. In fact, they've been uh, threatening now uh, some folks that uh, they will not accept defense cuts if 